Okay, so I've been pondering about this little motor here and um, thinking about it. I'm thinking I'll just wire it straight up as a um, uni standard old, old universal motor and um, bring it up on the Variac and see what it does. Well, so I've um, been thinking, okay, got two wires coming into the field coils two wires coming out so thinking normal standard universal motor these two wires are going to be going to the brushes these two wires are power in but then again thinking back to my little sketch sort of um, diagram here that I had and I thought okay let's let's give this a test we get resistance on that wire nothing on that wire nothing to this wire and straight through on that wire. So this wire here well okay this wire here appears appears to be just going through the winding. This wire here and this wire here actually run the winding. So <clears throat> um Looking back at our diagram, we've got power coming in through this wire here, and um, huh. okay, maybe my idea here was wrong. Um, but anyway, let's get this, I, I've started, I've put some shrink wrap on these wires, let's get this done and see if we can get this thing somewhat back together. Alright, so, um, yeah, I kind of don't remember what I said in the first part of this video, because that was taken, what? three days ago um, so yeah I've been fiddling around and pondering about this motor so I somewhat got it wired up somewhat um, I got it to run off the little get that out of the way that's useless um, off the little 3 amp 12 volt power supply I got it to spin kind of like that. The hardest part I think was finding nuts to fit on the front housing here and actually getting the thing to turn without jamming. Um, but it turns relatively smoothly now. Um, so let's try to figure out how I've got this wire. These two wires here are kind of it's just a switch turns it on turns it off um, this goes to that um, where is it this that will go to this which is that little contact switch internally um, on the machine um, as I said in the last video 
not sure what this does because all the playing around with it I have done those contacts have yet to open so not sure if there's something wrong with the mechanism or perhaps maybe those contacts are just supposed to um, open if there's a um, severe fault in the unit or something I don't know um, so Anyway, I've got this wired up. These two wires go together, and as you see, saw in the last video, I think, anyway, um, one of these wires goes straight through to, to this wire coming out that I believe went to the back panel, to the contact back plate possibly I I don't know um, anyway and this other one I had coming out the side to the resistor we've got a wire out the bottom here that presumably went to the capacitor that's not connected to anything I still have not figured out why Sorry about the shakiness there, that's in my camera mount. Um, I still have not figured out why a, a, a universal style brushed motor would have a capacitor on it. It does not need a capacitor to start the motor. It doesn't need a capacitor to run the motor. Uh, perhaps they were trying to get some extra um, torque out of it. I, I don't know. Um, anyway, how we have this wired up, I've got it somewhat hooked up to the Variac. And I, I really don't know if this is actually a Variac or not, to be honest with you. It's called a Veristat Dimmer um, by Ward Leonard Electric Company. I did another video on this. Um, I tried connecting it up to a um, standard as a standard variac with your positive or not positive uh, neutral and hot wires to your two coil terminals and your um, load would be connected to the wiper and to the neutral um, and I got this it, it blew the breaker so I, I just have it connected up as a, st a standard um, potentiometer sort of thing, just with the two terminals. Um, anyway, but it works. So anyway, so we've got our motor. We've got our voltmeter connected to it. Um, I tried hooking it up with the resistor network that's on here. And at full 120 volts, it was only pulling about, what was it, like 20 volts or something? It was barely even enough to rotate the motor. So again, I'm not sure what this resistor network was for. Or perhaps maybe this particular unit was made to run on 240 volts and I, I don't know anyway very x turned down let's plug in oh why are we showing 125 volts on that oh that's why because our little internal switch contacts aren't connected Okay, that should be better. Oh, come on, go in the plug. Okay. Obviously, 7 volts not going to do anything. And we got some action at... 40 volts AC now Q 
keep a look a watch on that little contact switch there at approximately 50 volts it will start to pull in so presumably and as I do not have an analog tachometer presumably this would be about possibly right there right about there is where is our little um, ID tag here presumably that would be approximately 1800 RPM I don't know just guessing it might be about that don't know but let's see what it'll and that's at full power which that seems to be more like the uh, blower motor on the old um, um, what is it world dryer company motor that I have that just like blasts and like full speed um, but yeah um, so I'm gonna play with this more see if I can possibly maybe I'm guessing that um, contact there is probably a speed okay so I've I've been fiddling more with this little electric motor and as you can see the rear end cap is on now I actually have it wired with the um, what I have determined it's not a start switch it's a speed governor and I apologize if I've um, said that already in the previous video these videos have been taken over about the course of a week um, but anyway we have our one line coming in here and um, it's going in through the one side of the motor for now and that goes directly to the um, rear contact on the switch the other wire going in here goes to the um, to this this brush holder on this side um, I think no no it does not it goes through and it is the wire one of the wires that comes out to the front here um, that goes to this plug switch on the um, on the machine and um, then goes back into the motor through the coils and then to this brush terminal as I said before, the other brush terminal is bridged to the contact on the slip ring. So that one um, gets its power from here. So, all right, let's power it up. And it is kind of iffy still, but we get a little bit of a jump there as inrush from the variac but let's let's run it up and the, scre the squeaking noise is the actual is the um, that single rear contact in the back And as you see, as the voltage goes up, well, here, let's get the meter in the picture. You can see it jumping around like that as it, um, 50, 50 volts, it's running steady, the switch is not disengaged yet. When we get up to about 54 volts, 
you can see the switch starts um, disengaging and the meter starts jumping around because it'll it'll read the um, the voltage the um, current or voltage coming directly off the variac with no load but let's put it up to full full power here and as you see the speed the actual speed of the motor doesn't really increase but obviously the torque has increased because we're getting full power through the windings it doesn't sound all that great um, and um, yeah let's turn that off and unplug it here but I'm I'm thinking that it it's actually supposed to operate the way the old um, national cash register does that the motor doesn't run all the time because this thing doesn't it didn't have a power switch on it anywhere thinking you just plugged it in and that little contact in in the mechanism was the power switch that you'd key in your numbers hit your function key that would engage that switch it would run the motor and then the motor would shut off so I'm thinking this is supposed is this running this is running the way it's supposed to be running not positive on that though um, still as I said before I haven't figured out what the resistor network or the um, capacitor it was for unless this was originally sold to a market where it would have been plugged into 240 volts or 220 volts back then um, again not sure what the capacitor would be for but the resistors when I tried powering up the motor with the resistors in line it did not it wouldn't even run because it was only getting about 22 volts through the resistors or out of the resistors so anyway um, we'll look into this a little bit more but again thanks for watching